any old tires you don't want? Only old tires I got them riding on. We got enough money to go to the circus, but not enough for the sideshow. <laughs> Save your money. Plenty of freaks around here. Hey, you think they got all the things they say they have? Sure, the man told us. Bet they ain't got no lions. They have to. The man let us see them. He did? Bet they ain't got no teeth. Sure they have, long as anything. Let you and me go see him. You can go ahead. We're going swimming. Hey, we're going past Doc Adrian's house, ain't we? Sure. We gone right by the front of the house? Sure. What's the matter? You scared? I ain't scared of no crazy doctor. Well, if you're coming, come on. Wait, well, wait, well, you see, it's this way. If I don't get home for dinner, what? Mom won't let me go to the circus. All right, so you're afraid. Well, you'd better stay here. He's got Willie. I can't understand why they don't do something about Doc Adrian. Destroying all the values in this town, giving Red Creek a bad name. I think so. You're right, Mason. You ought to have been run out of this town a long time ago. Who ought to be run out of the town, Dr. Mason? Dr. Adrian. You should have been with us this afternoon. He scared the women so bad they haven't got over it yet. Yeah. <laughs> this town's too healthy. Maybe he'd scare himself a couple of patients. Understand them big doctors make a lot of money on nervous women. Well, it was a funny when that epidemic broke out, Quinn. You know as well as I do, he used a lot of those patients as guinea pigs. I know nothing of the sort. I know he did everything he could. Two or three in this town, I wouldn't agree to that. However, I can understand his reason for want of patience now. Well, he got himself another this afternoon. <laughs> Little Willie over there. He ran after me, hurt me, and I wasn't doing nothing. Poor child. I think you're all yellow. She's right, and then you got the courage to do anything about it. His patients die on him, and now he's hanging around Miss Clifford's house experimenting with Francis, I guess. You make a poor critic, Mason. Your greed hasn't done this town any good. You doing preaching? A little preaching wouldn't do you no harm. What with the people you squeeze dry and the usury you charge on your loans. No, oh, I don't ask him to borrow. I guess there's an answer for that also. But I think it'd be wasted on you. Business is business, Quinn, and you know it. Besides, uh... We weren't talking about me. Why don't we kick the doctor out and be done with it? I'm ready any time you're willing to start it. Oh, oh yes, that uh, prescription. I'll fill it in a second. Been quite busy this morning. I'm sorry to delay you, doctor. It's perfectly all right. I can fix it myself. It's, it's none of my business. And maybe we men of science think different from other people, but... Uh, if they ever find out in the village what you've been doing. You mean about the animal? Yes, some of the dogs have been missed. Well, that phase of the experiment is all over. I've yeah. found out all I need to know. Can I help you? 
think they need you in the store. Well, just as you say, Doctor, just as you say. Enjoying the last of the sun, huh? Oh, doctor. doctor! Sit down. Thank you. Ah. Oh, how's my girl today? Well, you're all dressed up. Mm, Danny phoned. He's coming over. So early? We can't come tonight. He's going to the circus. Oh, oh yes, the circus. I almost forgot. I've got a present for you, Frank. Oh, for me, doctor? Well, now, don't get too excited. Just you oh. wait till you open it. It isn't anything at all. A though. jewelry case. Oh, Doctor. Oh, it's beautiful. But why so much, Doctor? You gave me a birthday present last month. So I did. Well, this is a make-believe birthday, just as you're my make-believe daughter. Was she very like me? She'd have been just 18 today. She was to have worn that. I couldn't save her, and I couldn't save our mother. I hadn't the weapons to fight the disease that killed them, but I have now, or at least I've got a knowledge of them. Ten years it's taken me. Francis, you are going to walk again. You're so intense, you frighten me sometimes. So Danny's going to the circus, huh? Yes. Then he's coming back here afterwards and tell me all about it. Oh, he is, is he? Well, why don't you go with him? Oh, me? Do oh, you think she you're could? Fooling. Why, of course she could. I don't know why she shouldn't. Hello, everybody. Uh, oh, Danny. Hi, Danny. Hello, Danny. Hello, Mrs. Clifford. Well, Danny, how would you like to take Frances to the circus? Well, gee, that'd be great, old lady. Well, of course she can go. We can take care of her. I'll be back for you later. Oh, thanks, Doctor. Now, don't you worry, Mrs. Clifford. Two strong men to look after her, she'll be all right. <laughs> be back later. Bye, Doctor. Danny, I think you'd better run home and get yourself cleaned up. You look as if you'd brought all of the grease from the garage with you. <laughs> you know, Francis, I think the Doc's crazy. I suppose I'll have to like him as long as he's nice to you. He wants to be nice to everybody, but people won't let him. Well, I'm not saying I believe all the things that... Don't you believe any of the things they say about him, Danny Foster? Well, all right, don't get excited. Look, Danny. Stories they tell about the doctor are just as dirty as the grease on your hands and face. Well, that about takes care of me. So long, honey. Goodbye, Danny. time next year, it'll take three men to lift you. Oh, not three men, Doctor. If it did, they'd want to keep me in the circus. Hop in, Doc. Oh, no, you can get somebody else at the circus to help you lift her down. What's the matter? Aren't you coming? No, you two go on by yourself. Oh. Now, you don't mind if I change my mind, do you? Oh, please, Doctor. You'll have much more fun together. Off you go, and don't forget to tell me all about it in the morning. So long, we Doc. Won't. Thanks for everything. Goodbye, Doctor. Bye. Goodbye, Mother. Bye. Have a good time. Bye. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Goodbye Mother. Goodbye. Oh, come, come, come now. This is no time for tears. I know it. I can't help it. Ah, nonsense. The change will do it a world of good. Good night. Good night. <laughs> You see him, Mickey? Who? Oh, the gorilla. Did you really see him? Yeah, in the sideshow. He's a big fella. Is he bigger than three men? That ape? That ape is bigger than six men. Six big men. It's the biggest ape gorilla in the whole world. Look, here come the clowns. Oh. 
Having a good time? Yes. You don't act like it. Gee, everybody's looking at us. I'm nervous. What for? Well, out with a married man and, you know. <laughs> This, this is the best circus I ever saw. The only circus I've ever seen. Get them while they're hot. Raise hook. All right, officer. Isn't she lovely? She's so graceful. Ah, she's not so hot. I saw her pass in the garage this morning. Them costumes make a big difference. That's what the doctor calls muscular grace. Muscular coordination. Uh, honey, look over that ring there. See? There you are. You're all right now. You'll be chasing bones in the morning. <laughs> what I've done for you, I could do for men. They let me. <laughs> That's all, honey. I'm sorry it's over. We'll never miss another circus. What are you trying to do? Drive that animal crazy? Well, he's getting mean. It's the only way I can handle him. You ever try a little kindness? Nothing wrong with him? Nabu. Come here, Nabu, old boy. Come on, Nabu. That's it. Yeah, well, two years That's ago, he killed my old man. And I ain't gonna let him forget it, understand? I know he did. I was right here when he did it. Because he was abusing him, same as you're doing. If you don't watch your stuff, he'll get you, too. Why don't you mind your own business? <laughs> you boys wouldn't be gambling, would you? Oh, no. <laughs> Sheriff, take me in. <laughs> <laughs> there was a fine show you fellas put on. You was the funniest clown I ever seen. Oh, I rode a horse. He was the clown. He was? Yeah. Oh, he looks like a judge. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, Pete, let's give him a hand. Come on.
Where's the nearest doctor? Doctor Adrian, get something to put him on. We'll take him there. Right. Get him on there. Somebody better get after that ape or he'll tear this town wide open. We get a posse together. Come on, boys. Let's see if we can go about that fire. Badly hurt. Sorry to bother you, Doctor. Bring him in here. Come on, right here with him. Well, what happened? An ape got him. An ape? Hope we scared him off in time. This man's badly more. Well, you better get him into my laboratory. Jane, you show them. Well, now, how did it happen? Was he in the cage with the ape? No, the circus burned down and the ape escaped. The circus burned down? And the audience? They'd all gone home. Oh, thank heaven for that. Now, will you want us any further, Doctor? No, I'll take care of it. Well, then, come on, boys. Let's get out and see if we can find that ape. Don't let him get at me, mister. Don't let him get at me. Perfectly safe here. Yeah. I'm a doctor. I'm a hurt bad, Doc. I'm afraid, sir. I don't feel it. Am I going to die? We all have to die sometime. Oh, just don't let me die, Doc. Man. The highest kind of animal. Hey, Doc, what are you going to do with me? I'm going to write you into medical history. I'm going to keep a promise. Wait here. Keep your eyes open. That sheriff ain't got no heart. I'm so hungry, I could eat hay. Well, there's a barn full. Help yourself. You take your fellows and search the country up around Carter's farm. Jim, you take your boys and cover the west side of town. Pete, you stay with me. All right. How about joining us, Mason? Let the circus people do their own work. Why should we do it for them? But the circus is burned down. They've had trouble enough. Oh, that's their tough luck. Well, if we don't find that ape, our own people might get hurt. That's your job. Your law and order. And why should I worry about other people? They don't worry about me. You wouldn't be a little bit scared, would you, Mason? Well, don't be all day about it. So we're ready. He gives a body the creeps to think of that critter roaming around. Better keep the doors and windows all barred. No telling who we'll go for next. Are you all right, dear? Mm-hmm. Want some more? What you thinking about? I was thinking about that wonderful woman aerialist I saw last night. Oh, here comes Dr. Adrian. Good morning, Mrs. Clifford. Good morning. Francis. Oh, good morning, Dr. Adrian. I want to thank you again for the wonderful time I had last night. Yes, sir. It was too bad about that trainer, wasn't it? Now, don't you think about him. This is the most important day in your life. Today, we are really going to start her cure. I found the serum that I need. I'm going to walk, Dr. Adrian. I hope so. I'm not just thinking about you, Francis, but of all the other sufferers in the world, all the little boys and girls who can't go out into the sunshine and play and have fun. 
who have to spend their lives in a wheelchair like you. I'll do anything I can, Dr. Adrian. I know you will, my dear. It's not going to be easy. It's going to hurt. But when it hurts, don't be afraid. Just remember that when the pain is gone, it'll leave, it'll leave new life behind. Huh? I think we'd better get her ready. All right, Doctor. We've got them here and there and here. Now, if we don't get any results tonight, we'll start in here and work west. Oh, change your mind, Mr. Mason? I never change my mind. You gotta have one first. That's enough out of you. Here's that dispossessed notice on Wilcox. I want it served tonight. We're busy tonight. It'll wait till tomorrow. Your duty is to take care of the citizens of this town, not fooling around chasing apes. It seems you're in a mighty big hurry to make people uncomfortable, Mason. It's my business what I do. Fine, and it's mine what I do. We'll get to this when we have time. No. Good night. Oh, Doctor. Well, Francis? Oh, my legs. They feel like lead. I can't lift them. But you never could lift them before. Oh, I know, but I never felt them before. You, you feel them, Francis? You feel them? They're so heavy. Well, that's good news, my dear. That's what we were hoping for. But it's only just the beginning. If there's any change, you send for me immediately. Yes, Doctor. Oh, Mother. Jane. Jane. Jane! Look, I've succeeded. It's there. Life, life in that tiny bottle. It's working. My child will walk again. Just go. torn up. Oh, we better get a doctor. It ain't no good. He's been dead for hours. Well, let's notify the sheriff. All right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hurt quite a little, Danny. I know now Dr. Adrian is really going to cure me. Well, if they hurt you, how can you be getting better? Oh, you don't understand, Danny. They never hurt before. There was no feeling at all. Now they feel alive. Just the same, I don't like it. I don't like things I can't understand. Well, I don't understand either, Danny, but I believe in him. Oh, I have so much faith in him, Danny. He says I'm like a daughter to him, and well, I know he wouldn't hurt me unless he had to. It's, it's part of the cure. It's just got to be. All right. I'll try to believe, too, honey. But I'd rather carry you around all my life and have anything happen to you. Hello, Sheriff. Any luck? Not yet, but we'll get him. Well, I hope so. Come on, boy. Come on. Yeah, it looks like they picked up a scent. Come on, Sheriff. Come on, Sheriff. All right, get him. Yeah, well, yeah. well, what got into him? Hold on Hold a two minutes, will you? Yeah, you bet you Hello, Doc. I haven't seen anything of that ape, have you? Oh, no, I haven't, Sheriff. Well, my dogs just acted as if they'd picked up his scent. Oh. Well, I better be careful. Yeah, you better be. Having trouble with insects, Doc? Yes. Uh, this is just a little mixture of my own I'm trying to get rid of them with. Well, if it works, let me know. My yard's full of them. Certainly will. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, but I made lamb stew and dumplings. I don't care for lamb stew and dumplings, thank you. Besides, the shirt wants it out early. Capture that ape. You needn't lie. I know where you're going. Oh, you do? Yes, everybody does. So you've been listening to gossip, eh? I can't keep people from talking to me and telling me you found a new interest. Suppose I have. Well, there's nothing I can do about it, I guess. Well, I'll keep that in mind. But if you just wouldn't carry on here where we live, so people would stop pitying me. Even if you'd go somewhere else. Why don't you try going somewhere else? But I have no one but you. I have no folks. I've got no place to go. You've got the river. I feel sorry for his widow. Oh, she's better off. 
Oh, that ain't funny when a man's been clawed to death. I didn't like him when he was alive, and I don't see any reason to like him when he's dead. Well, just the same, it ain't right, even if he was no good. We gotta give that ape credit. He only picks out the ordinary cusses. <laughs> what makes you think you're safe? <laughs> <laughs> Well, boys, you got yourself some rest today? About 40 wings, we're plum tuckered out. Well, maybe we can get some more people in to help us out. Why don't we go out in the daylight? Because he don't come out in the daytime. The circus people told us we'd never get him then. We got to catch him prowling after dark. Think he's still hanging around the village? He got Mason, didn't he? And we found new tracks up around Dr. Adrian's house. Oh, give me a sarsaparilla. Quiet, too. Uh, what do you think of that, sir? If even the dogs don't like him. Well, what got into him anyway? Back the same way around his house. Don't make sense. Maybe it's because the doc looks so much like an ape yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is no time for joking. All of you be on the job tonight. I'm scared, Mrs. Clifford. She looks almost... I'm really scared. We must trust Dr. Adrian. But we don't know. He ain't got a patient in this town. People don't just hate a fellow for nothing. Do you hate him, Danny? No. It's not hating him. It's... It's loving Francis the way I do. If anything happens to her... I'm going down to see. I gotta ask you. I gotta know. Danny? Danny's worried, isn't he, Mother? Now you just rest, dear. Danny will be all right. Oh, my legs didn't hurt so. But I'm not afraid. You aren't, are you, Mother? No, darling. I want my little girl to walk again. You ain't going in there, Doc. Now, oh, what is this, Danny? I'm scared about her. I gotta know what you're doing. Well, surely you want her to live a normal life like other people. Well, sure, as long as nothing happens to her. I love her just the way she is, Doc. I can take care of her. I want to take care of her. I don't want no experimenting on her. But, Danny, if through her I could rid the world of... I'm this... not in love with the world. I'm in love with her. I get it. She's just a guinea pig to you. Well, you gotta stop it. You gotta stop hurting her. Have you been to your garage today? No, I ain't. I've been too worried. Well, you take care of your cars, and I'll take care of my patients. Now, just you run along. I ain't running no place. I ain't no doctor. And I don't know enough about what you're doing. But if anything happens to Francis... Nothing's going to happen to Francis. Now, don't interfere. Here comes Danny with the doctor. How do you do, Dr. Adrian? Well, how is my patient feeling this morning? I'm all right. She's been in great pain, Doctor. In pain? Well, that's good. Good? Of course it is. That's what we're looking for. Now, you prepare her. Work. You say the name is Mason? Yeah. Yes, Doctor. Initial H. Anything in your examination to go into my report? No, I believe not. Well, I just said the death was caused by a fractured vertebrae. I guess that about covers it, doesn't it? Yes, I, I should say that it would. The reason I sent for you, Doctor, is because you examined the circus trainer when he was sent north. And this case being a similar one to that, I thought probably in your examination that you had discovered something that I had overlooked to put in my coroner's report. I see. Uh, this Dr. Adrian, whose name uh, is on the death certificate, is he the local physician? <laughs> yes, if you can call him one. Folks around here don't like him much, though. And he was also called in on the case of the trainer? Yes. Yes, that's the same fellow. He came here during the paralysis epidemic. But the folks around here say that he experiments too much. 
Thank you very much, Coroner. I believe you've given me all the information necessary. That's fine, Martha. Oh. Oh. Francis, what do you feel? Oh, my legs. They're hurting? Oh, they hurt terribly. You more sensation than you had yesterday? Oh, yes, much more. And do you think perhaps you could walk? Oh, no. Then try to move your foot. Oh, I can. You can. Try. No. You can. No. You can. No. You can. Oh. Oh. Now you rest. You rest. I'll be back later. Mother. I, kn I know I'll be able to walk again. I know, baby. I know. Dr. Adrian? That's right. I'm Dr. McNulty from the Robinson Foundation. Oh, yes. I had occasion to examine the body of a circus trainer who was killed by an ape here in this town. Yes, sir. I understand that you uh, administered to the wounded man before he died. I did my best for him, but it, it was quite hopeless. In spite of the spinal injection you gave him? I gave him no injection. I just came from viewing the body of this man, Mason, and I noticed a similar spinal puncture. Did you examine him also? Well, he called me in, of course, but it was too late. He was dead. And you noticed no such puncture? Well, the body was so badly mangled that... Uh... Well, no, I didn't. I see. I understand they've had an epidemic of paralysis here. That's true. Many years ago, the Robinson Foundation found it necessary to expel from the institution a most promising young research worker because of his daring, unorthodox experiments with spinal fluid. It was 25 years ago, to be exact. Then you are that Dr. Bernard Adrian, whose definite theories... And in spite of what you did to me for 25 years, I've been engaged in proving those theories. By what method have you been doing this? I'm not in a position to disclose that at the moment. I see. Well, I'm afraid you leave me no alternative but to report... Wait. If I could give you some small measure of proof, would you change your mind? I doubt it. Let me show you. I'll show you. You see? Now, these two creatures were completely paralyzed. But after my treatment, well, you can see for yourself, they're as lively and healthy as ever they were. All this has nothing to do with the case. But it has. The serum that I used... What became of the serum you took from those two men? Come with me. Oh, doctor. Oh, this is Clifford. Now, this is Dr. McNulty. How do you do, Doctor? How He'd do you like do? to talk to Francis. She's asleep. No, I'm not asleep, Mother. Hello, Francis. Hello. Now, this child has had a complete paralysis of her lower limbs for ten years. Is that right, Mrs. Clifford? Yes, it is, Doctor. Have you had any feeling at all in your limbs since uh, Dr. Adrian has been treating you? Yes, they've been terribly heavy, and I've had a great deal of pain. Pain? Yes, and just a little while ago, I moved my foot. Is that right? That's right. Will you do it again for me? I can't. Make an effort. I can't. Thank you. That's all. I 
think you'd better take her out into the sunshine. Is there anything wrong, Doctor? Why, no, Francis, dear, of course not. Well, her foot did not move. But I did feel a definite muscular reflex. Congratulations. May I notify the Foundation that, that you'll come back to us? It's too late. I have to stay here. At least give me your promise to keep us informed of your progress. Every step of the way. Thank you. Not finished. Gee, look those. Do you see some? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way. Do you see the white of his eyes? Maybe they ain't white. I want to take a chance and shoot now. I want my Willie found. The idea of him wandering around in the dark with that gorilla loose. Which none of you men seem able to capture. Oh, it's all your nephew's fault. He's always leading my little Willie astray. Well, he's always under Mickey's heel. Oh, he's nothing now, to that ladies, now. we've got work to do. Your kids are just someplace where they shouldn't be. That ain't nothing new. Have you looked down in Jones's barn? I caught them smoking there last week. We've searched the whole town. Go take a look for them, Pete. They ain't far away. Sheriff! 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 Where have you been? Just a minute, Walker. We got him! We got him! Oh, what, what, what is it? Mickey killed him. He shot him dead. Bang, bang, between the eyes. Hold it, kids. What'd you shoot him with, Mickey? My 22. I got a good beat on him. Where's your 22, Mickey? He dropped it, Sheriff. I did not. The ape grabbed it. I'll ape you when I get you home. Ah, oh, gee, Ma, don't you believe us? Where'd you see him? On the pike, about a quarter mile from Doc Adrian's house. All right. Get him home. Come on, Mickey. Come on, Willie. Come on, Come on, Mickey. Come on, Mickey. Come on, Mickey. They probably shot a cow. Yeah. <laughs> I look into it. Where are the dogs? Red's got them over on the other side of town. All right. Let's go. <laughs> Wait a minute, boys. I want a word with the doctor. I'll be right out. Okay. All right. Well, Is the doctor in? I wanted to see if you were all right. Ain't been out, have you? No. I'm trying to think out, Doctor, a lot of things. That ape seems to take offense to your place. Now, don't take offense, Doctor. I'm just trying to clear up my mind. Them dogs of mine have been sniffing ape for days. It's made them foolish, I guess. 
Else why'd they snarl at you? Well, there may be some chemical odors on my clothes that offended them. Uh-huh. But I ain't never seen my dogs offended at anything. Can't understand it, Doctor. Yeah. Wait a minute. Jane! Just get me that torn coat of the trainers, will you? Now, this is an idea that's just occurred to me. I don't know whether it makes sense or not, but perhaps it'll explain your problem. Uh, you see, this coat was worn by the trainer when he was mauled by the ape, and it's been in the house ever since. Now, that perhaps explains the interest of the ape in this house and your dogs in me. No, then no, no, I'll bet you're right. Well, I'll get along. Think I'll put a few men around your house the rest of the night, Doctor, just so you'll be protected. Why, don't bother. I'm perfectly safe. And they might interfere with some work that I have to do. Well, maybe I'll just keep an eye out myself. I'm just a bit scared, Doc. But don't tell anybody about <laughs> it. This is the coat that trainer was wearing when the ape killed him. Boy, Just look he at that. Look that he got he it that. Up in a One sweat. Well, come on now, boys. We're, this isn't getting us anywhere. If we lay down on this job, our own coats will be in the same shape. Come on, let's get busy. Now, you All fellas right, get back to your positions. Right. Uh, you boys go up this way. All right, Captain. I'll stay here. Francis, dear, I want you to forget all the hours you've spent in this chair. Put them out of your mind. You're not paralyzed, you never were. Fasten that firmly in your mind. You're not paralyzed. You'll do that for me? I'll try. Don't forget. You are not paralyzed. Now then, move your right leg. Move it. You can. I can't. Try, try. Stop you it, can. you're hurting it. I can't, Quiet. Dr. Adrian. Try it, Francis. You can. You know you can. Move. There. You moved it, didn't you? You moved it. Now the left one. Now the left one. Now move it. Try. Try again. There. You moved them. You moved them both, didn't you, dear? All right, then. Stand up and take a step towards me. Do it. Do it. It's only your mind holding you in that chair, not your body. Do it, I say, do it! Uh, you see, I told you. Go get her some water. Oh, she's all right, Danny. She's better than she was, isn't she? She needs more. She needs more. Take care of her, Danny. I'll be back. Francis, Donald. Francis. Name's Halliday, sheriff over to Red Creek. Got a job finding you. Well, circus jobs are pretty hard to get, sheriff. You know, all jobs are kind of scarce. You boys get that ape yet? That's what I come about. Didn't get him, huh? It's bad. He's a killer. You boys got some responsibility tracking him down, haven't you? Well, we did the best we could, Sheriff. The fire broke up the circus. Some of the boys stayed there, didn't they? Yeah, but that's not what I come about. I just figured when you're looking for something, it might help to know its habits. Too many things about this animal I don't understand. Well, animals is all alike. Lions, elephants, dogs, they all got one track minds. What do these gorillas uh, live on? They ain't killed any animal. Shucks, no, they won't touch an animal except out of meanness. They live on fruits, 
vegetable. Well, that's what's bothering me. What's feeding this fellow? Maybe digging up a garden patch or two or stealing a little bit of fruits. No signs of it. Checked with all the farmers. Do they prowl around much or do they stick to one place? Well, a gorilla generally sticks to one place if he's got anything there to keep him. We see evidence that this fellow's hanging around one place. Hey, that ape had it in for the trainer. Where'd he die? In the house of a doctor near the outskirts of town, and that's the place we think the ape's been hanging around. Say, how would he uh, trace the trainer to that house? Well, sense of smell, we're pretty good at that. Did you bury him in town? No, we sent his body to his people up north. That don't give us much, does it? Any of his clothes around? When that trainer was taken away, his coat was left in the doctor's house. Would that draw the ape there? It certainly would. You'd better get rid of him. I was afraid my time might be wasted coming over here, but I guess it ain't. Thanks very much, Mr. Howley. I better be getting on the road. I'd like to make home around nightfall. Well, anything I can do for you, let me know. <laughs> record book and keep it for me safely. Two boys go over there by that shrub. Danny, take your men down there a hundred yards by that rail fence. Okay. Oh, Sheriff, we've been watching there every night, and so far nothing's happened. Now I'm. Will you tight. take orders? All right. All right. You two boys go over by Wilcox's barn. Uh, you mean Wilcox's barn? Yes, Wilcox's barn. All right. You two boys go down the road a hundred yards. You two wait for me over by that stone fence. All right, Sheriff. Is the doctor here? You sure of that? He's not in there. Sheriff, what's the idea of sticking around so close to the doc's house? Because that attendant told me that ape would haunt any place where that trainer had been. Oh. Hey, what's getting into that sheriff? Hey, he's getting touchy. Lost his sense of humor. <laughs> you know, when a man can't laugh, it just suits. This where we found the body? Mm-hmm. Uh, do apes ever return to the scene of the crime? They're noted for it. Well, we got something to look forward to. George! George! 
He told us not to leave here. Where was he? That way. What is it? What's the matter? Did you fire that shot? Yes. It's Tom. The eighth twist of his neck. But Archie knifed him. Can you walk? Pick him up and oh, carry him. I'm all off. right. Go and get him. God, he can't be far away. Come on, get out. Get out, him, you fellas. You boys, come with me. No, no, Francis. I'll see what's happened. Francis! Let me give him one, sir. Hold on, that's enough. He's done. What are they doing? What are they saying? Darling, I don't know. The dark. All right, boy. Take that off of him. Let me through. Did the ape hurt him? Let me through. Let me through. Dr. Adrian. Come to me, child. Walk. Walk. He's dead, boy. Honey, you, you mustn't overdo it. I'm doing better every day, Danny. Oh, sure. You're doing swell, but you got to take it easy. I'll get your chair. No, Danny. Mother and I burned the chair yesterday. I'm never going to use it again. You bet you won't. 